after abandoning our RV and moving into a hotel just under two weeks ago, today is our first day skiing at Sugarbush. Hello and welcome to Adventurous Way. We've been in Vermont since November and we were staying in our RV until we discovered mold in the RV roof. So we had to move out of the RV until we get it fixed, but we will not let this setback ruin our winter fun. In this video, we'll also give you an update on the latest on our property search and the RV situation. Time to venture into the outside. Except I'm locked in. Can you let me out? <laughs> Thank you. We've had our ski equipment now for quite a few years from when we used to ski back in California. And one of my favorite accessories is this kind of like ski harness that I'm wearing that just Velcros onto the skis and then I can throw them over my shoulder and I don't have to carry them anymore. They're just sort of hanging on my back like a backpack. They make life so much easier. I'm still holding the poles, but uh, not having to carry the skis is great. You just have to remember when you try and turn around that you might wipe someone out if you're not careful. So much easier. So on our last skiing video, we were at Killington and it was cold that day. I think it was like minus seven or something. Coldest we've ever skied in. We, uh, we asked for any tips and comments from you guys on how we can just stay warm. My feet in particular are really struggling. Your goggles were fogging up. We had some great, great tips in the comments on that. So thank you so much for everyone who left us some comments. We're trying several of those today. We did not leave our boots in the car overnight. We didn't make that mistake this time. So my feet are a lot happier already. I'm also wearing only one pair of socks, the kind of the less is more philosophy. So last time I had three pairs of socks on thinking more socks equals more warmth but it really isn't. So today, just in one pair of socks, I would normally wear two. Um, today I'm wearing one, and so far it seems to be really working. So yeah, kudos to you guys for that. Thank you so much. How are you getting on today? I'm good. And uh, yeah, eventually I will need to get new goggles. I've been snowboarding for, I don't know, like <laughs> 10 plus years. So my gear is, some of it is that old and goggles is probably like, I don't know, eight something years old. So I definitely need to get new goggles yeah. at some point and that will help with very cold skiing. For now, when it's warmer days like this, it's about, what, you said 20 or I think so? it's about 20 today, so it's a lot warmer than last time as well. Yeah, so for today it's fine. Um, but and, yeah. and most of the skiing that we've done has always been around about 30 or yeah. so, or warmer. I mean, yeah. certainly there's been times where we've been skiing in a t-shirt, yeah. but the real cold stuff is, is new to us. So keep those comments coming. We love it. We love hearing from you guys. They're awesome tips. So thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> Our plan this season was to ski most of the winter at Killington, which is where we've been until now. This is our first time at Sugarbush. Now Sugarbush is part of the Icon Pass that we already had that was letting us ski at Killington as well. And we were expecting to ski here a few times this winter, but it looks like it's going to become our main resort now. And the reason for that is that the hotel we're staying in is the wrong direction from Killington compared to where we were before. So it'd be about an extra 45 minutes of drive to, uh, to get to Killington. I think in total it's now about like an hour 45 or something to mm -hmm. get to get from the hotel to Killington, which is just a bit too far to, to ski there each day. By contrast, uh, Sugarbush here I think is about 45 minutes from our hotel, an hour maybe. I think it's an hour. An hour. It's just a much shorter drive. Sugarbush, like I say, is one that we're wanting to ski at anyway, so it's not a big deal. And so far I've been really impressed. It seems, yeah. seems really nice here. Yeah. I like how there's a lot more snow on the top of the mountain than on the bottom of the mountain. Yeah. Even though it's cloudy today, it's not the kind of the blue skies that we, we love to see when we're skiing. It's still really pretty and we're having a lot of fun for our first day here. And supposedly a winter storm is coming tonight. So maybe there's going to be a lot more snow in the coming week. Yeah. What was it? Eight to 12 inches of snow tonight. Yeah. So it could be a great day tomorrow on the slopes.
That was a lot of fun. Yeah, especially at the top, there's a lot more snow, which is cool. And the conditions are good today. They were. I, I still love it when it's like clear blue skies and sunny, because then the contrast and the snow is good and it's beautiful. But temperature wise, good. Conditions on the snow itself, really good. So, yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah. But as we normally do, it's now time to head home or to the hotel in our case. There's no graceful way to do this. <laughs> How are your feet feeling? Good, a lot warmer than last time. They got a bit cold at one point, but they soon warmed up again. I, I think once I got on the lift, I could wiggle my toes and bring them back to life. So thank you for those tips. That made a big difference. Although it was also warmer today as well. Yeah. But I think the, the warm sock helps and starting with warm boots definitely helps. This is a nice thing about having the truck bed that we can load things straight into here. This is the, there is no graceful way to do this part. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, also having the truck where we can like get changed in the back like that. We really like that, that's cool. We finished skiing this morning at about 11.30. So it wasn't a long ski session, maybe a few hours, um, but that's kind of how we like to do it because that way we can then get back to the hotel in time for lunch, and then we've got the whole afternoon free to get work done. So that way we're able to combine the skiing and the working, and it works really well for us. This weekend uh, that just gone, uh, we had some blackout dates on our passes where we couldn't ski at the resort. So instead, on Saturday, we spent the day doing some house hunting. And well, not quite house hunting. Or land, land hunting. Land yes, hunting no, you're right. And so we were uh, looking online on our Realtors website at a load of different plots that have been found that kind of fit the rough criteria that we have. And we were going through those trying to really work out which ones we liked the look of and, and worked for us. There's a lot of inaccurate data in these things. Mm. It's, it's really slow going, but we, we've kind of said one thing that will rule somewhere out really quickly for us is not having internet access. We, we just need good, fast cable or fiber um, internet access. Maybe when Starlink comes along, this whole thing is less of a problem, but that's just not something we can rely on just yet. We don't want to be quite so locked into that, that one vendor. So for now, we were able to go through and find lots that kind of fitted our needs in the right location, right size, right budget, but also had the internet connectivity that we wanted. So we did that, and how many did we get through on Saturday? Uh, we looked through probably like 40 or 40. something, and then we picked some favorites and then um, we chose some that especially kind of clustered a little bit in a similar area and then we went to visit some of them yesterday. Yes we saw I think we had a list of about 12 ideally that you want to get to and how many do we do like eight or nine? Nine. 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 So we, we saw about nine different uh, locations yesterday and it's it was really good. I think it went a lot better than last time. We were a lot more prepared. We, we knew kind of what to expect and what we were looking for and one of the great things about visiting at this time of year is that we get to see exactly what the access might be like in the middle of winter. Yes. And actually the very first uh, plot that we arrived at, we were able to rule out um, purely because of access. So in winter, this road turns into a snowmobile trail and uh, we can go there now with a truck, but I think we actually don't want to live in a place this remote. It's beautiful up here, but it's access would not be easy for a non four wheel drive vehicle up here after a bad storm or anything, certainly. And so it's not just like, can we get in and out that we're trying to think about? It's like, can we get deliveries in and out? Could an ambulance get in if it had to, or a fire truck? And up here right now, it would have been fine, but after a bad storm, it could be very different. And even then, this is as far as we can go. We can't go further than this. I don't know, I just don't feel comfortable with having a property that can't be accessed pretty reliably by road. <laughs> so this property, goes from roughly where the tree line there is to kind of roughly there. So it's fairly large frontage, it's 11 acres. There's Highway 89 nearby. So now we're gonna listen to we hear the sounds of it. Yeah, you can hear some, but I don't think it's a concern. Okay, I think this looks pretty promising.
I agree. We wanted to take a walk in the property, but as soon as I stepped out of the car, um, I sunk in. So we'll see whether that's a good idea or not. So this is the property, seems fairly flat, 10 acres. Looks like there are some trails through the woods. So yes, it went really well. We found three or four locations that we kind of quite like the look of and they, they ticked all the, the boxes that yeah. we had. And it's interesting how some of them, they look great when we look at them online, but then when you visit them, it just doesn't work. Or some of them that like look okay online, but then when we visit them, then it's the views are amazing, Yeah, for example. No, I mean, one of them in particular, the views were just stunning. It was, it was really beautiful. So no, we had a really good day doing that. And then on the way back to the hotel yesterday evening, we made one stop uh, at the end, and that was at the RV. So we haven't really been back there in the past week or so. We've been here at the hotel, and we're trying to avoid spending any more time at the RV than we have to, uh, simply because of the mold. We don't want to be in that, in that environment. The home automation system and the security cameras that we have there mean that we can check in on things, make sure everything's okay. Everything was looking fine. We had no concerns. We've got neighbors looking out for the rig mm -hmm. as well. Um, so we had no concerns, no problems. The one thing we wanted to stop in for was to do a mold test kit. And we intended to do it the last time we went to the RV. Uh, hadn't realized that you have to leave the Petri dish to kind of gel form a over. gel yeah. uh, for about one hour. Uh, one hour, yeah. Hour beforehand. And we, we planned to do it as the last thing before we left. Therefore, we didn't want to wait around for another hour. So we went back yesterday prepared. We did the mold test kit. And this is the kind that we uh, need to send it to the lab and then we'll get the results back Yeah, you from swab the lab. a sample and put it in the Petri dish and, and yeah. mail it off. So we did that. Uh, the condition in the ceiling, in some ways it seemed a little drier maybe. Uh, there's still a lot of areas that are very wet and it's all black and we still need to, to take the RV back to Oregon to the factory to have the roof replaced. But at least we will know, hopefully in a week or so I guess, mm -hmm what exactly we have growing up there. On that note, uh, I just want to say a huge thank you oh, to yeah. everyone on the comments. Uh, we've had so many emails and comments and messages and things uh, from everyone watching. Uh, thank you guys so much. Um, we are really trying to stay positive, but knowing that you're there supporting us and encouraging us is, is just, it's huge. Um, so thank you so much for that. We were sitting there trying to answer as many comments as we possibly could. Uh, so many suggestions and things coming through. We've tried to answer as many as we really can, um, but if we haven't got to yours yet, know that we've read them. Uh, we see them all coming through and we really, really do appreciate it. So for the next week or so, uh, or two weeks, I guess, there's still not much we can do uh, with the RV. The RV is sitting there, it's empty. We've got the, the um, thermostat and the dehumidifier set to keep it at a pretty steady temperature, keep it as dry as possible. That dehumidifier in the time that it had been running mm. for, was it maybe five days since our last visit? it had got maybe like a pint of water out of the out of the RV. So there, there really isn't a lot of moisture in the air uh, over there, which is a good thing. It'll keep everything nice and dry. So really for the next couple of weeks, we are trying to focus on the land search. We're trying to focus on the skiing. We're trying to enjoy all of the luxuries of the hotel. Uh, I may even have two showers a day just because <laughs> I can now. Uh, it, it's really, we're, we're just, it's, it's a bit of fun, I guess, but we're, we're trying to enjoy it as much as we can. The hotel room has been great. We've been really comfortable here so far. It currently looks like a bomb site. There's a reason we framed this in, in, in this location so you don't see the carnage in the rest of the room from all the stuff that we've yeah. pulled in. And... So that stuff we'll need to sort it out and some of it will have to go in the storage when we drive to Oregon because we can't have a full trailer being worked on while the stuff is inside the trailer. Yeah, we're gonna tow the trailer almost completely empty on our way over to Oregon, both to hopefully reduce the chance that any of our stuff gets moldy and make it easier for people to work on the trailer, but also just to make the trailer lighter. Mm -hmm. um, we don't need any of that stuff for that journey. And so it'll just save a bit on fuel economy and all those kinds of things. One of the things we do need to do though is find a storage unit uh, that we can use for the duration of, of that journey. So we're gonna be calling around uh, next couple of days to try and find ideally a climate controlled uh, storage location where we can put all of our things for at least the next couple of weeks, I guess. And then in the hotel, I mean, it has pretty much all the amenities. One difference with the RV, it does not have an oven. So we have definitely been doing a lot more air frying and uh, figuring out more recipes to do with the air fryer. We're having fun, we're enjoying it. But again, just a huge thank you to everybody out there for all of your support. It has been fantastic. So thank you so much for watching this video and hit that subscribe button to follow along to see what kind of mold we have in our RV 
and to see the roof replacement. I want to chase you, just get out of the road. <laughs> What's that? He's still running in front of you. Now he's just showing off for you and flying. 